Success Radio USA's Profiles of Success is brought to you in part by the 365 Grand Club, Colorado Springs' only elite urban downtown club. Don't like having to park downtown? Don't like paying full price for great dining? Hate working out in crowded gyms? Use your 365 Grand Club card and forget all of that. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www365 365grandclub.com That's 365grandclub.com Go there today and join the club. The 365 Grand Club. And now, let's join your hosts of Profiles of Success, Sean Bader and Jerry Evans. Welcome to Profiles of Success. I'm your host, Chuck Bader. And I'm Jerry Evans, and we do want to thank you for joining us here on Profiles of Success. Remember that you can find us by going to our Facebook page at Success Radio USA or by going to our website at successradio.us. Did I do that right? You did that exactly right. Yes, Wow. (laughs) <laughs> and we have a wonderful guest back on here. It's been a while, but uh, we thought it's a good time for an update. This is Jonathan Liebert, the Executive Director and CEO of the Better Business Bureau. So welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know that because <laughs> you're always thinking and moving and, and putting things out there. So we probably have a lot to catch up on. What are probably some of the bigger highlights you've had since about a year ago with your social impact program? Well, there's been a, a lot of movement, a lot of momentum, a lot of exciting things going on. But okay. um, you know, starting kind of at the at the sixty thousand foot view, there's there's two things I wanted to kind of talk about today. Uh, okay. The first one is uh, I think last time we were talking about one of them maybe, and then the other one is totally new. Hmm. But the maybe one was that we were having some conversations with Pikes Peak Community College about potentially doing uh, a degree program, and right. I'm excited to say that uh, that came through. So. Pikes Peak Community College is one of the, the first community colleges here in the state to offer what their their degree is called a degree in social innovation. Wow. So you can go and get an AAS degree huh. and uh, from P- P- Pikes Peak Community College. And then what, what's interesting about this, this is kind of cool, is that then they're going to send their students over to the Institute for Social Impact where we will kind of oh. complete the capstone program. We'll do stuff kind of hands-on in the community with social entrepreneurs. I mean, really kind of get them out there and get them to be introduced to the to the, all the subject matter. And hmm. they'll get a certificate from us. So they'll be certified in social impact strategies from us with a degree in social innovation. And the whole idea behind this, and this is something that uh, Dr. Bolton, the president out there, and I had talked about years ago, was just, you know, we need something that's a little bit different. We don't want to, he said, I don't want to give them a degree necessarily in, you know, non- nonprofit management. You know, but we are, and we already have business stuff. He's like, well, what, what can we do that kind of blends both? I was like, well, it's social innovation, right? And so the idea is, you know, you go get this degree and you can go work for a nonprofit and bring business to that nonprofit. You go work hmm. for a for profit and you bring the mission piece. Or if you go work for a social impact business, you're already good to go. So it's a pretty diverse uh, uh, opportunity in the sense of you know what that degree does. And so excited to say that they had their their starting this fall. They they, they started enrollment a couple months ago. Nice, uh, but they've got folks in there and uh, it's generating a lot of interest interest and a lot of excitement and uh, I think we'll see a lot more of this program not only here but I think other people will probably adopt similar things around the state in the future you know, oh, you, yeah. got, you, know you talked about it being an AA degree um, uh, can they use that to advance the, to a further degree or is this just going to be something that's kind of an idea that you can use it at a community college that's a great question so there's a, a couple of universities uh, one Regis has already decided that they mm. will take those credits and you can apply that to a four year degree wow that's great and there's a couple yeah. other universities we're talking to that will take that and be able to apply that as well so yeah great question uh, how can you take that and move on from that and so there's some four year degree programs we're looking at so people can apply those credits there you go okay yep. Well, that would seem like, from what I'm gathering about the concept, they would really give these people with those certifications a cutting edge because instead of working for an organization fulfilling the traditional role, for lack of a better term, they go in as almost a missionary slash consultant about, you know, here's what you're currently doing, but now with the social impact movement, here's how you can, like you said, blend the two. Right, and that's exactly what it is. It's this hybrid. Right. And it's kind of taking the best of both these worlds and providing more more benefit for people, more value for them. Right. And the other exciting thing that we'll do at the beginning of this next year is taking kind of a, a note for from the certification for these students, we're also going to be offering a certification for professionals. So you, you've already got your degree, you've been to school, you know, oh, you're, okay. you're done, you don't want to go back, but you know, you're interested in learning more about this type of stuff. We'll be giving a certification uh, that will start uh, here. We'll, we're going to do our first one probably in um, November, December. It's just kind of the pilot group. 
And then after that, we'll be doing and offering this, not just here in Colorado Springs, we'll be offering this throughout the U.S. So we'll actually fly people in here to Colorado Springs. They'll sit and learn from some of the best social entrepreneurs here in the city. Right. And, and to be honest, I think we've got some really great folks here in this town doing some wonderful things. And so yeah. the idea is to kind of highlight that and bring people here to learn from the, the good stuff we got going on here. And um, oh. we'll get some other people uh, professional certification, the first of its kind uh, in the U.S. So what another uh, uh, generational hybrid, because here you have the younger folks who really get this stuff, and now you're talking about, for lack of a better term, the older professionals, uh, and then to bring both of those minds together. So the enthusiasm of the new, and then with the experience of the wisdom of the old, wow, that's going to be some great things. Yeah, some exciting stuff. Yes. Yeah. Making the world a better place, literally, you know? That, that's what we're trying to trying to do. But mm-hmm. um, that's there, there's some even uh, more exciting news. Oh, man. Think. So, so <laughs> here's the... I know, I know. We, <laughs> is we, this number two coming this, out This is the second part. This is okay. the second part. So this is something we've not talked about on the on the show before. So this is something that just kind of we've been working on for a little bit of time and, and uh, some, some exciting stuff. Hmm. This is kind of hot off the presses, uh, but... One of the things, <laughs> right, 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 we've heard it live on profile. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, that's right. But uh, a lot of times we'll get the question where people will say, "This is great. This is exciting. You know, where do I go to find the list where I can go buy from these businesses? Oh, you know, yeah. so wh- where is this at? This is great. You know, where do I go find this stuff? And it's like, well, good luck. You know, it's kind of mm. scattered. You know, throughout. You got to know what you're looking for at the end of the day. Wow. So the Better Business Bureau at the national level has said, we want to get into this. And this we have talked about, of potentially having some kind of accreditation or certification. But before we get into that, the BBB says, well, we want to be able to kind of understand how big the sector is. So we understand the market, how to, to market ourselves, what's our position in it, you know, all those different types of things. Right. And so we want to better understand what this segment and this industry looks like. So we are starting uh, a ma- to map this out. And so the, okay. the the main organization, the national organization, is paying our local BBB uh, to start this project. And so there'll be three phases to this project. Phase one is, and that's what we just started um, in the beginning of October, uh, we're going to map this out. We're going to map out the sector just for Colorado. And based on what we kind of learned from there, we'll go into phase two, which will then we're going to map this out probably in five to ten other larger cities mm. to make sure that, you know, everything's making sense and it flows, et cetera. But phase three will be that we would roll this out throughout the U.S. And by that, what that means is, you know, when this is all complete, for the first time in, in the United States, we'll actually have a list of this, of this new industry, uh, this fourth sector of the economy, which doesn't exist right now. Hmm. And so Colorado will be first, and Colorado Springs will be first before that. And wow. we're doing it here from good old Colorado Springs and, you know, some exciting stuff. We're going to learn a lot from this project, but uh, I'll be honest with you, we've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> right, right. But, hey, that's part of the process. Right. <laughs> so when you talk about mapping, I know the one thing you guys currently have in place is a mapping for fraud, which is literally mapped out, a heat map. Right. Is that kind of the same thing you're talking about for the nonprofits, the uh, social impact? Um, it's similar in that okay. sense. Is that, Yeah, there's, there's not that place, that one place where you can go to find out all this information, right? So if you wanted to buy from uh, a cafe or from – a uh, computer store or from whoever. You don't even know who's doing what. Mm-hmm. And so that's where you kind of got to figure this out on your own. So BBB, and when they create, when they generate this list, it will tell people in their area, here's all the places that are doing these types of social uh, impact type strategies, these conscious businesses that are doing more and giving back to their community. Mm-hmm. At that point, BBB is not going to accredit them. That will probably come later. Mm-hmm. So phase one of this process will be, let, let's map this all out. Let's create the, the list because right now that, that, that doesn't exist. Exactly. So as we map out the sector, and this is something that I think later on, you know, BBB could partner with like a Stanford and a Harvard mm. and other universities that are, that are doing the research in this area. But at the same time, they don't have all the demographic information that you would for any other sector, which mm. is kind of interesting because right now I can't tell you how many are in the U.S., how many jobs does that create, what's their economic impact. We don't have that data. Uh, and so every other industry has it, but this one doesn't. Right, because so, it's so new. Because it's so <laughs> new, right. Really and so this is a big, huge first step. So this will be big for BBB, but I believe it will also be big for Colorado and Colorado Springs to be able to kind of figure out, you know, what does it look like? What do these businesses look like? Then we can go find them and pull them into this database and then refine that over time and get more information and more data. So right. after we get this database, I think you'll see a lot more research on the sector from big schools hmm. um, and providing more value to the community and to businesses and hopefully – uh, make even more of these businesses. Now, you that, said over you know. time. Uh, do you have a timetable for implementing this? So we'll be done with this first phase by December, this December. Okay. So it's a, it's a short turnaround time. And what we're kind of – what BBB has is, is tasked us with is we want to know – they want us to, to determine 
what does a framework look like for these classes what are for these um, uh, businesses and so once we kind of get that done my hope would be that within the next you know six months to a year we do kind of a phase two and then you know so again another six months or a year after that we can kind of finish phase three because at phase three all BBBs will kind of start pitching in and pulling the stuff together hmm. so part of the design that we're creating is how do we get other BBBs to use the boots on the ground so I'm not having to do all of it exactly. we, got 100, we got 106 other BBBs let's, hey, let's there you go <laughs> let's recruit an army here and get some help I gotta delegate you, at least you'd be healthy if you did it all by yourself right? I'll tell you what I'll be running around like nobody's business right yeah that's basically true it would keep out of trouble though, so that might be a good thing. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <That's the outside. laughs> right, right. <laughs> Okay, that's encouraging. I mean, this is exciting to. I mean, we're making a piece of history here. It's it's a whole new sector. It's yeah, amazing. It's 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 awesome. And and, that, and truly, I mean, that that is the opportunity, right? This is a whole new sector, you know, and to map it out and be uh, one of the first to do it. Oh, I yeah. think is uh, very exciting. Yeah, well, if, uh, you, if you can enroll it uh, nationwide, I mean, that is really a piece of history right there. Well, the cool thing, I always look for people who are like the Mr. Holland's Opus, who do great things in their, you know, right, CDG. Yeah. And that's what Jonathan's doing, you know. It's like someday, 30, 40 years from now, whatever, he's going to look back and it's like, oh, my gosh, look what we've done, you know, just by doing the right things. Right. And, okay, you're right, Jared. So you want to take us into break? No, I want you to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did well, it all last week. <laughs> <laughs> back to the routine. Pen, uh, pen and paper, I can say these things. And you write down the name, the address, <laughs> and the phone number of the sponsors of our show, and you put it on your refrigerator. So when you need a computer repaired or legal services, you know exactly who to call, when to call right away. And we'll be right back on Profiles of Success. Success Radio USA is always looking for ways to help you succeed. Whether it's offering a word of encouragement or sharing practical information that can give you the competitive edge. So you'll want to pay close attention to this. Our new sponsor, the 365 Grand Club, can give you the edge when conducting business in downtown Colorado Springs. You might want to entertain a potential client or just show appreciation to a loyal business partner. Either way, your new 365 Grand Club card is your passport to downtown Colorado Springs. Your club card gives you access to discounts, business perks, making new business connections, and the convenient private concierge service that makes getting around town hassle-free. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www.365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. Get yours this week and join the club, the 365 Grand Club. This week... My name is Harley Mitchell. Next week, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll use your name. You see, I'm a cyber criminal. And I steal information that defines who you are. Things like your driver's license number, your birth date, your home address, your office address, your social security number, your medical information, insurance cards, business licenses, and if I can get it, your birth certificate. If I can get one... I can get the rest. It's not personal. It's just business. Once I have your information, I bundle it with others and I sell it. Not just once, but over and over and over and over and over. Due to recent massive data breaches, your personal information is now available for cyber criminals like Harley to buy and sell to their underworld counterparts for profit. Bad people with bad intentions hiding behind your identity. Don't be fooled and lock down your financial life. Use the professionals that Fortune 500 companies use, ID Shield and Legal Shield. It costs less and reaches further. Don't lock down your life. Call Andrea Wacker and get the right protection for the right problem. Andrea Wacker is your lady of justice. Call now at 719-243-3174. That's 719-243-3174. Listening to Success Radio USA at successradio.us. 
Success Radio USA is committed to helping you achieve a positive daily approach to your success each and every day. Thank you for listening. back on Profiles of Success. I'm your host, Chuck Bader, along with Jerry Evans, and I really love it when the ladies sing, you know, know it's yes. great, you know, the, <laughs> we don't even have them in studio, but they sing so perfectly. Hey, anyway, we want to thank all of you for joining us here on Profiles of Success. You can find us by going to our Facebook page at Success Radio USA, or by going to our website at successradio.us. As they hear us all the time and want to get back to our guest. Now, before I do, I'm going to, to do something slightly risky here and digress just a little bit oh, no. because there's a relevant point. But, um, and again, we, we talk about this all the time, but part of the problem within the uh, self-motivational industry, success industry, whatever it is, positive thinking, is the fact that people are trained to go to these seminars or to buy this book. And the thing right. that I hate that they say about that is this seminar will change your life. This book will change your life. As if, <laughs> you know, you can change 30 years of brain programming within a weekend or something like that. And the thing I want to correlate to what Jonathan's doing here is this is a massive project. And you would assume with social media and the fact that people get this stuff and it's good that he would just put out something on Facebook or Twitter and the whole world would catch on and all the schools would be part of it, all the business would be part of it, and you'd have this thing rocking. But he's talking about two years down the road. So as you're thinking about changing your life, realize that it's not a one weekend seminar and it's not one book. It's hundreds of books. It's hundreds of seminars. Uh, but it is a long process. And like Jonathan is doing, you've got to have the good plan. You well, know? basically what you're saying is you can be influenced by the seminars and the books and everything, but it's still up to you to make the change. Exactly. It's a good start, you know, yeah. and that's what, and this is what goes back to Zig Ziglar. You know, people used to chastise him on motivation and he said, motivation is like bathing. You have to do it every day for it to not stink, you know, for it to be effective. You got to do it every single day. You can't just take one bath and you're good for the year, you know, mm-hmm. or they talk about eating one meal and being good for the week. No, this is something I was always do. But what Jonathan's pointing out here is the good plan and coordination and collaboration. There are no self-made men. And talk to Adam about that one. But there's this team effort that you've got to reach out to a broad perspective of people of different disciplines and talents to build this plan to make this thing happen in a slow process, a well thought out process. So I just wanted to digress for a second. But back to this exciting stuff about the fact that you're you're bringing in at the local level, the local businesses, you're going to map this stuff out. You're going to gather data, bring universities into it, major corporations into it, and major learning centers into it. I mean, this is really, really the proper way to do this. No, it's exciting stuff, and I think it's just a big opportunity for all of us. Um, one of the things that um, there's, you know, there's forums for this stuff kind of all over the world, and I think I mentioned on the show before that there's other countries that are doing more of this than we are. So, right. you know, this isn't something that, you know, U.S. is first on. Colorado can be first on this, right? But the right. U.S. is not. Um, in other parts of the world, um, the U.K. specifically, you can go pull up on online their, their social impact report. And they'll tell you all this information and the stuff and what it's doing and why it's important and all this. Hmm. So that's the thing is that in those in those forums and throughout the world, what's really interesting is I've heard from a couple of different people have said, hey, we had this this world forum on this stuff. Mm-hmm. And the United States isn't there. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, where, where are Ouch. you guys? And, and when, when are you coming? I mean, and they've been saying this for you know, at least you know three, four years. Ouch. So By just, several different countries? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So and then when they have the world you know, social examples? enterprise forum. You got any examples? Well, the UK, is, I would say, is probably kind of leading this. Um, Canada's doing some great things in this. Scotland's doing some phen- phenomenal things, specifically as a country. Um, mm. Australia. Um, there's a lot of social enterprise businesses, um, even in, in Africa and other, you know, other parts of the world. I mean, this this stuff is, is, is widespread. But again, to be kind of focused and strategic and purposeful about this, that is just something where the U.S. is, is lacking. And well, why is it behind the time, so to speak? Well, I think in, in a couple of the of other situations, to be perfectly honest, in other places of the world where the economy was not as strong, they were they just needed to do. They were looking things. for ideas, they were looking yeah. for something to right, work. Okay, and this is one of those things that they that they did, and they found out like, oh my God, this this worked really really well. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're going to keep doing this. Yeah, good. And so for the U.S., I don't think that it's been that bad so so far in the sense of being able to kind of do because this thing does multiple things at once, right? You're making money, you're providing profit, you're also creating impact in your community, you're giving back to your community, you're reinvesting that money. So it does multiple things, and that's the, kind of the important thing of this. 
for us, I think it's just taking a little bit more time for people to kind of understand this. But also at the same time, the millennial generation is really kind of pushing businesses because the people that own the businesses now, Gen Xers and boomers, are the ones doing the work. But the consumers are demanding this of them. So I think that's different than the economy in other countries that just mm. kind of went bust. And, hey, we're going to try these 15 different things and we'll see what works. Oh, that yeah. one worked. We're going to keep doing that one. Exactly. Here we're doing it now because, <laughs> well, it makes sense. And it, now it, it, it makes sense to certain types of people, right? In the end, I think that more and more people are supportive of this because, you know, try quite honestly, you know, people want to support a business where their money goes further, right? If you're going to go and buy a product anyway, you're going to buy it every single day, right. but you're helping to solve homeless issues or you're helping to put military veterans back to work or you're trying to help the poor or, or poverty or help kids learn to read. As human beings, we're passionate about something it might not be the things i just mentioned but i guarantee you as humans there's something that, that we're all passionate about the trick is and the, and the thing is that people don't realize that wait i can i can do that with my business model i don't just have to <laughs> yes. donate money to the nonprofit. and i got nothing against nonprofits, but at the same time that model is something where it hasn't worked as well as it had because and here's the reason why let's think about this is that when things are going well specifically with the economy there's lots of money to go around so right now the economy is doing doing good Unemployment is low. We're like the, the lowest in the history of, of what it's been, yeah. right? And there's still need out there. There's still problems, right? But my point is this, is that when the need is greatest, so go back to 2008 and 2009 when unemployment was, you know, at 8 and 9%, everything was bad. Mm-hmm. And when the need was the greatest, there wasn't the excess dollars coming from Wall Street to go and fix those problems. Hmm. Everybody had to figure it out on its own. <clears throat> So when the need is your greatest, that's when the least amount of money is there. And now when there's the most amount of money around different problems or that, that could be applied to different problems, it's still applied, but the, the need isn't as great as it was in 2008. So there's more money now, but not as many issues. But even the issues that we do have right now, we're still <laughs> unable to solve it. So it's like this, this, this makes no sense to me. Right. So the, I think the thinking has to change and the model has to shift a little bit. Exactly. Somewhat, somewhat perplexing, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just uh, you sit back and you think about it, and you're going, well, why in the world wouldn't that? And then, then you come back and say, well, why in the world would it? <laughs> right. And that's sort of the, how I, I approach it, I guess. Right. So, yeah. But I think it's cool, too, because um, it's almost the self-awareness, the self-actualization, that it's kind of a latent desire to want to help people to do things that are good. And and traditionally, the business world has not met that, that persona. It's always been about for-profit, for the bottom line, for stock returns. But now, like you're talking about, and I forgot who the guy was, that was like one of the most respected business leaders in the world that wrote about the fact that, you know, if you're not getting on board with social impact, you're going to be, you know, losing out. And so it's great to see that even at the high business levels, and it's almost like the movies you see all the time, right, where you have this cold business person or uh, undercover boss or something. And once they're made aware of that and they get tuned into that, it's like, oh, my gosh, what can we do to help out? Right. And you're talking about Larry Fink, the CEO okay. of BlackRock. And, That's it, yes. And, and he's bringing up an interesting point because, I mean, there, there's two ways to look at this, I suppose. One is, well, just you know, be, be nice. Be a good person and, and kind of give money back and pay your employees well. And there are people that do that. You know, yeah. I think the larger argument for this is that if you look at the simple economics of how this all works right. and that the simple economics are this, is that when you look at the statistics of the middle class is disappearing, people are not saving for retirement. Oh, they don't have gosh. enough money. You know, yeah. financial management is poor in this country. Um, I saw some statistic um, the other day that talked about um, 50 percent of Americans have less than five hundred dollars in their savings account right now as we speak. Yeah. And the same 50 percent of Americans, if some kind of catastrophe happened, their car got broke, their water heater had an issue, they couldn't scrape together $2,000 within 90 days to pay for something. Right. So when you look at that piece of that, that's a problem because in companies, and this is what Larry Fink's talking about, is that if we wait for the government to figure this out to fix this problem, we're going to be waiting forever. And if we're waiting for them to figure this out, we're all in trouble. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have consumers to purchase from companies, then that's what we need to assume, right? We're, we're, We're still the number one economy in the nation. We're moving forward and bigger is better and all this type of thing. But if you don't have uh, folks that can pay for things, if you don't have consumers that can buy from you because they don't have any money, the whole thing collapses. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Larry Fink is talking about is that companies, not government, are going to have to figure this out Mm -hmm. in the sense of – and it's not government's going to solve all the world's problems. It's 
each or businesses are going to solve the world's problems. Each business needs to figure out how it can pay, you know, good wages and provide benefits and provide retirement options for them. We can't wait for the government to figure it out because they're not they're not going to in time. Mm-hmm. So it's up to businesses to do that. And guess what? We as, as, as folks from a consumer standpoint will pay attention to that or us as workers will pay attention to that. We're going to go work for these companies that are they're doing good things and paying good wages. I mean, it's just it's common sense. Exactly. But not necessarily commonly practiced yet. I think that's where this movement is kind word. of going. It's, yeah. it's, it's happening at, a, at an accelerated rate. And, and get, the word yet is so great in this case. <laughs> right. Know. Right. And some of the research um, shows this. There's one specifically from a guy named Rai Sisodia. Uh, he's from Harvard. I got to meet him this week, and he was up in Denver speaking. Hmm. Um, we'll tell you that these conscious capitalist companies um, that are breaking kind of the rules of traditional business, they actually make more money. So, so what are the rules they're breaking really quick before the break? Well, you might be paying more for their product or service. They're paying their employees more. Um, they're giving away, you know, free child care or other benefits, you know, on site. Um, they're giving money to nonprofits. They're investing in sustainability. They're investing in local nonprofits. They're giving money away. I mean, they're doing all these things that, you know, well, don't right. do that. It's all about profit and, and, and do what you can to make profits. Right, right. Well, it might take a little bit longer to make profit, but you make – seven times more than you normally would because hmm. you're engaging in really kind of good business practices. And, and again, here's the thing too, and, I, and we talked about this before, you know that, that trust ethic things that you know we talk about BBB a whole lot? <laughs> that is rising up the scale in terms of what people are most interested in. Mm-hmm. So if you are a trustworthy, honest, transparent leader in business, this is like the number one most thing people are, are looking for now in business. They're looking for trust. They're looking for ethics. They're looking for transparency. Hmm. Now, I know we're going to take a break here, but I, when we get back, I want to uh, use an example that was presented to me during a sales seminar and, and how what you're talking about in a reverse order can come into play. So we'll talk about that when we come back, okay? And before we go, it's your time to get your pen and paper out there. Write down the name, phone number, and website of the companies who sponsor this show so that when you need their services, you call them first because we trust them and their integrity. We'll be right back on Profiles of Success. Success Radio USA is always looking for ways to help you succeed. Whether it's offering a word of encouragement or sharing practical information that can give you the competitive edge. So you'll want to pay close attention to this. Our new sponsor, the 365 Grand Club, can give you the edge when conducting business in downtown downtown Colorado Springs. You might want to entertain a potential client or just show appreciation to a loyal business partner. Either way, your new 365 Grand Club Card is your passport to downtown Colorado Springs. Your club card gives you access to discounts, business perks, making new business connections, and the convenient private concierge service that makes getting around town hassle-free. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www.365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. Get yours this week and join the club, the 365 Grand Club. It gives clarity to problem solving. It increases production and focus on the job. It alleviates sleepless and restless nights and fends off stress and tension headaches. No, it's not the latest energy drink or health supplement. It's Legal Shield. Get peace of mind every day, every night, now and forever. Legal Shield. Get it. To find out more about Legal Shield and how it can protect your family and your business, call Andrea at area code 719-243-3174. That's area code 719-243-3174. Legal Shield. Listening to Success Radio USA at successradio.us. Success Radio USA is your source for inspirational, motivational, informative, and life changing daily content. Thank you for listening. Welcome back to Pro 
profiles of success. I'm your host, Chuck Bader, along with your co-host, uh, Jonathan Lieber. Jonathan Lieber, yes, the man, the man. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Ocean, yeah. <laughs> yes, we'll take you. No, I, I guess I'm Jerry Evans. That's right. All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here on Profiles of Success. You can find us by going to our Facebook page at Success Radio USA or by, go, by going to our website at successradio.us. So... I teased about the fact that we had you know, a subject matter that maybe I wanted to get into a little bit more uh, because you were talking about the advancing of, of how businesses uh, you know, operate by giving back. And it was amazing when I went to a sales seminar when I was working in radio full time, they were talking about a radio station that had been giving away bunches of stuff. I mean, just right and left, you know, money, cars, anything that they could think of, you know, they were giving it all away because, you know, they had a huge listenership. They had like with, and I don't know if you're familiar with like they call market share in radio, but they had like a 39% share. I mean, they were just unbelievable. They were the number one radio station anywhere around. So they decided the bean counters came in. The accountants, in case people don't know what that is. <laughs> they came in and they said, you know what? We know a way that you can make even more money. Stop giving away all those wonderful things. Stop, you know, promoting your business and whatnot. And uh, don't do remote broadcasts and everything along that line. Literally, in three years, they went from a 39% share. They went down to selling the radio stations at a negative 3% loss. Wow. Hmm in literally in three years just because they reversed how they did business and when you were talking about that given you know back i I thought about that as an example of how somebody you know a, a particular business was really given back and how they just faltered because they stopped doing it right and, and i think that that's really key and in Especially in today's marketplace, when you're talking about millennials and and uh, Gen X, I mean, these people are the ones that are going to have all the money. You yep. know, us old timers, <laughs> you know, we're going to run out of money, maybe, or you know, or the money's going to be left to them, whatever the case might be. Well, I think you, can, you kind of have to ask yourself the question too of going back to the beginning of this, right? In the sense of, well, well what's the why of business? And hopefully, right, yeah. you know, all your listeners have, have have learned or seen or watched Simon Sinek and talk about this, right? You know. Yeah. And, you know, this is something I ask my students at UCCS where I'll ask them, you know, one of the first classes, it's like, what's the why of business? And all their hands go up and they're like, you know, Professor Liebert, it's, it's, it's to make money. And it's, mm, and, it's like, wow. and it's like, well, no. And they're like, what do you mean? No, we're sitting here in a business class. <laughs> I'm in business. I need this, to make money. Who are you, Jonathan? What's going on here, <laughs> yeah. right? Who do you but think I, you are? Exactly. But I tell them, I was like, well, you think about this. You know, think about it for a second. What's the why of business? And this is what I believe is that the why of business is not necessarily to make money. That's an outcome. That's a tool, right? Yeah. But I think that's where I think we've kind of forgotten a little bit of how this all works. Right. Business is, is, is here, and the reason it exists, it exists is to solve problems. It's, it's here to build um, communities. It's here to build culture and cities. It's here to create innovation. And we are, we're all living longer. We're living better because of business. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. So the, the mm-hmm. life expectancy just went up by like another year. Uh, mm-hmm. They're they're saying now, and all that's because of the way the system works. <laughs> and so there's a lot of opportunity that kind of comes with that. But I mean, that's what business does: is it builds communities, it builds society, it builds upon education and knowledge for the betterment of everybody, even for insurance agents. Well, yes. especially for those. <laughs> guys, <right? laughs> but but that's the whole piece. The piece of this is that where I think people just kind of see it as well. Profit for profit's sake is a very short-sighted and a potentially dangerous thing because you might do some things that are a little sketchy, mm-hmm. right? Or it might not be sustainable right, yeah. if you're doing it just to do that. But mm-hmm. if you do it with purpose and you do it, you know, with obviously with a strategy and being being strategic about it, I think it's different. But again, but that why a business says if it's, if it's here to build society, well, then that means, again, like I said, that that money, making money is – that's, that's, that's one way to measure success, but it's, it's an outcome. Making money is an outcome of whatever it is that you do. And we've right. all been there, right? You've all been to a job where it sucks and you hate to go in and you're not looking forward to it. Even then, it's like, well, I'm making a good paycheck, but right. you're not going to last very long. Yep. Money is not enough. When you look at why people leave jobs, I think pay is like, you know, one of the one of them up there. It's like, but it's like number 7. Usually it's your supervisor. When you look at millennials going in to getting a job, and this is what businesses are telling me right now, is they're concerned not so much about, yeah, I got to make money, I got to sell things. But I'm really nervous about getting this generation in to come work for me. If I don't have a workforce, I can't make anything to make any product to sell anything. Mm-hmm. And these millennials What's are responding What's their major to that. concern about the, the workforce? I mean, you're talking about 
they're nervous about it, but is there a major concern or is it just because society has changed? Society has changed. Millennials are looking for something different. Um, the what average are they looking time, for? <laughs> well, and, and, and you can go, there's some, some great research on a millennial, although I will say that now there's this other one called Gen Z coming. We, we don't know anything okay. about them. But, uh, be, be, I don't know be much warned. about millennials. <laughs> well, millennials, there's been a, a lot of good research. The, one of the really good ones, and I'll cite this data, comes from uh, a 2016 report from Deloitte. We've all heard of Deloitte. They did a right. millennial survey. And when you go and you look, because on average, millennials are like you know one to three years averaging in a job. If you're lucky, it's three. Really? But they found that there were some millennials that were working in a job for five years. And when you look at the 10 different factors of what millennials are looking for, Salary isn't even on this list. Hmm. That's not what they're looking for. They're looking for a mentor. They're looking for a good work environment. They're looking for friends at work. They're looking to build relationships. They're looking for training opportunities so they can learn more and and be smarter. Hmm. But the number one thing that millennials that stayed in the job for more than five years, according to Deloitte, it's like 88% of them, said they had a sense of higher purpose Hmm. at work. Wow. And here's the perfect example. This just happened a month ago. Um, Starbucks decided that they were going to start paying their employees, basically, to go volunteer. Hmm. So if you're a Starbucks employee and you want to and you want to volunteer for five, ten, I think it's up to twenty hours a week, just go volunteer. Starbucks will pay you to do that, which is crazy, right? Because they're not doing work at Starbucks; right, they're right. doing work in the community. They're yeah. not making that latte not, or right, right. cappuccino or whatever, <laughs> which is which makes zero sense, right? On, on, on the traditional way of looking at business. On the flip yeah. side of this, and I think it was a Wall Street Journal asked them, "Why in the world did you guys decide <laughs> to do this?" And their answer, Starbucks answer is simple: It's like it's good for business. Hmm. And like, well, what do you mean it's good for business? You know, right. you're literally paying somebody not to be at work. Yeah, this makes zero sense. And they said, well, but those are the types of people that we're trying to attract to come work for us. Those are the types of people that we want to work for here at Starbucks, and they look at what we're doing and they see that higher purpose. Because again, making Starbucks and making lattes and cappuccinos, I'm sure, is, is fun for most, but that's not necessarily that that higher purpose. Exactly. The higher purpose to them is something else, and that's what Starbucks is also trying to sell, not necessarily to us as consumers, but they're selling it to employees. Come work for us. We're a company that thinks different. We're going to give you um, health benefits, even if you're part-time. Come work hmm. for us. We're going to get, you can get a, a business degree, a bachelor's degree in business um, through ASU. It's an online program. They'll pay for that. Hmm. Or you can go wow. volunteer. There's these different things they're trying to say. There's more, we're more than just kind of that traditional company where you come get a paycheck. This is a, you know, we want to impact your life in a positive way and give back to you to make you a better citizen because it makes a better community. That's, right, a, that's, exactly. a, that's a different way of doing business. And, and it's in a Starbucks. They sell coffee, but right. that's not all they're selling. I remember taking a college course on accounting, and, of course, a part of that was a, you know, a spreadsheet. And one of the things that they had in spreadsheets was the fact that they had one category that said goodwill. And it was not talking about goodwill industries. It was talking about what are you doing to uh, promote goodwill for the company? You know, that you know might be volunteering or whatever the case might be. Right. And I think that uh, Starbucks, with this example, has taken that to a higher level. Right. And, and I think this is something that, that all of the three of us here can learn from millennials. Because this is what I ask my students. And my students are a great focus group. They don't know this. Don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> don't I, listen if you're hey, right. Hey, everybody. Right. Jonathan <laughs> said. But I ask them questions. And one of the questions I asked them was like, well, well hey, well, why, why do you guys believe in this kind of business with higher purpose? And what's the deal here? And they said, you know, that's that's easy. And I said, you know, we've watched our parents work hard their entire lives. Right. And in some cases, they've been laid off after 30 years or they've been fired for whatever reason. They've given their lives to, to these companies and corporations. And they lived for the weekends. They worked for the weekends. And you, you work these hard, you know, and this, is, this is why millennials don't like, you know, the eight to five kind of time frames. This is, and, you know, we're the same way. There's some times where I don't want to get up in the morning. My brain's not working. I'm not giving my best, but I'm there. I'm at work. Right. I might be, have a great idea at 10 at night. And so millennials want that. But here's what they told me. They said, you know, I looked at my parents kind of slaving away and working for this corporate structure and this thing, and they weren't happy. And they were, they, they got to enjoy life on the weekends, you know, maybe. And they said, this thing that you, you know, Gen Xers and Boomers talk about where there's this work-life balance, like there's no such thing. It doesn't exist. There's something called work-life integration. Exactly. It's how you integrate yep. these things. Yep. And they said, you know what, we're not going to do that. We're not going to wait till we're 50 or 60 and retire and then maybe do what we want and be passionate and purposeful. Why can't we do what we want to do now? Why can't I work, earn a paycheck, but also provide you know value to my community and to society by giving back? Why can't I do that today? Why can't I go work at a company that believes in that 
and they're going to pay me to do that. Mm-hmm. And every and it's good for everybody. Why would I wait till I'm sixty? Yeah, and it's like you know that's a really good point. Well, it's kind of funny when you see the encapsulation of this, go back to Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, and his concept was getting the right people on the bus in the right seats, and that's what these guys are doing. What's the company that's going to make it fun every day? Because then uh, employee productivity goes up, and like with Starbucks, I mean, you think about it from the business perspective, it's smart to pay them to volunteer because what's the cost to replace them? So I'm sure paying the volunteer is not only less, but, you know, creates that goodwill you're talking about. Creates a lot of value for those employees. Exactly, yes. And a sense of fulfillment, that's, that's what everyone's seeking. Right. Even when you look at the, the, the information that talks about um, where people are at in terms of productivity, but also engagement at work, mm. it's like at this all-time low. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to say it's something like 50% of employees are actually engaged at work. It gave me less than that. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> yeah. So forgive me. But at the same time, when you're looking at these companies that are they're doing more, they're giving back, there's, there's higher engagement. There's a new statistic that came out from Conscious Company Media, which is up in Boulder, that said in the last three years of the, of the companies they surveyed, that had no higher purpose other than making profit. Their stock has declined in the last three years by about 42%. When they looked at other companies that had a higher purpose built into their business model over the last three years, 82% of those businesses' stock has increased. So you're looking Mm. at a very different avenue of, of this because one, if you have a higher purpose, you're engaging consumers. If you have a higher purpose, you're engaging employees. People will come work for you. Guess what? If you get 50% you know, productivity from your folks because they don't care because you don't care versus <laughs> the companies that do care yep. and they're giving you 100%, Happy employees are going to bring you happy customers. This isn't rocket science. I know, right? It's but so basic. <laughs> it's, it, and there's a bunch of new studies coming out about this stuff. So it's exciting to kind of check it out and see what's going on. Well, it's good to hear the empirical validation about this as well. So absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Did you get a good sip? <laughs> uh, yes. Well, I'm trying to before okay. the break here. So do you want you take us out this time? We'll, oh, we'll volley. Oh, all right. We'll volley. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you get out your pens and papers, everybody. Write down the uh, email addresses that, are, of course, that we uh, like to give out to everybody, and also the phone numbers of all of our great businesses that are part of this program. And we'll be right back here on Profiles of Success. Success Radio USA is always looking for ways to help you succeed. Whether it's offering a word of encouragement or sharing practical information that can give you the competitive edge. So you'll want to pay close attention to this. Our new sponsor, the 365 Grand Club, can give you the edge when conducting business in downtown Colorado Springs. You might want to entertain a potential client or just show appreciation to a loyal business partner. Either way, your new 365 Grand Club card is your passport to downtown Colorado Springs. Springs. Your club card gives you access to discounts, business perks, making new business connections, and the convenient private concierge service that makes getting around town hassle-free. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www.365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. Get yours this week and join the club, the 365 Grand Club. This week, My name is Harley Mitchell. Next week, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll use your name. You see, I'm a cyber criminal. And I steal information that defines who you are. Things like your driver's license number, your birth date, your home address, your office address, your social security number, your medical information, insurance cards, business licenses, and if I can get it, your birth certificate. If I can get one... I can get the rest. It's not personal. It's just business. Once I have your information, I bundle it with others and I sell it. Not just once, but over and over and over and over and over. Due to recent massive data breaches, your personal information is now available for cyber criminals like Harley to buy and sell to their underworld counterparts for profit. Bad people with bad intentions hiding behind your identity. Don't be fooled and lock down your financial life. Use the professionals that Fortune 500 companies use, ID Shield and Legal Shield. It costs less and reaches further. Don't lock down your life. Call Andrea Wacker and get the right protection for the right problem. Andrea Wacker is your lady of justice. Call now at 719-243-3174. That's 719-243-3174.
listening to Success Radio USA at successradio.us. Success Radio USA is committed to helping you achieve a positive daily approach to your success each and every day. Thank you for listening. Bader. And now I'm back on Profile Success. I'm your host, Chuck Bader. I was wondering, I was like, Chuck, where are you? Where are you? Horton here's a who, right? I love those books, Dr. Ooh. Seuss. My goodness, that was wonderful. That's stuff. a whole brilliant topic right there. Bro. That's right, exactly. There are psychology on steroids. Man. And I'm Jerry Evans. We want to thank you all for joining us right here. On Profiles of Success, you can find us by going to our Facebook page at Success Radio USA or by going to our website at successradio.us. And so Jonathan's bringing up some history on this stuff. And, and it's for lack of a better term, it's almost like a person who's not living right, life the right way uh, in the fact that you need to be focused on gratitude and generosity instead of greed. So whether you're the worker or the business, when you get sucked up in greed, all these bad things start happening. And then all of a sudden, you'll come to a point, you'll crash on it and say, oh, I'll never do this again. I'll reform myself. I'll get back to basics. And Jonathan's pointing out that, what, 1700s, this stuff was written about. Yeah, so we're all familiar with Adam Smith and the Wealth of Nations, and right. we're all familiar with this concept of the invisible hand. <clears throat> but you know, and, and there's a lot of stuff out there. You can, you can go Google this, but what you're looking for when you Google this is you're looking for the specific passage that kind of talks about this, not somebody's interpretation of what this mm. means, but you're looking for Adam Smith's kind of original writing on this whole thing. Because mm-hmm. what he talks about, and the whole thing of what this invisible hand is, remember, it's this thing that guides you. And what he says is this, is that, you know, the invisible hand, number one, is it equates to kind of the market, but it also is it equates to, to business. And if you're a business that's going to go out there and do something, you know, horrible and cheat people and lie and steal, nobody's going to buy it from you. There's this thing that that um, that's called a social contract that businesses have with consumers, and it's not necessarily a legal thing. It's a social contract of, if I believe you're doing good, I'm going to buy it from you. If I believe you're doing something wrong or bad, it may not be illegal, but if it's unethical, I might not buy from you. And so in, in, in the 1700s, when he wrote Wealth of Nations, and even before that, he wrote another book, uh, it's like 17 years before Wealth of Nations, that talked about just the, the morals and the values that businesses must have and, hmm. and, and pass along to the community for the community to trust them and to do business with them. So the higher ethics you have, the more you reinvest back into the community, the more you solve those, those social issues, right? then the better that business would, would be determined to be because of the value that they're bringing back to society. And so even then, that's when he's talking about the, 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 the invisible hand concept is that you've got to do these things over here on this side of being good and being honest and being ethical, uh, being having customer goods, customer service and those things because then people will, will, will buy from you. And that's what this kind of invisible hand thing is about is that if you kind of do these right things, then the rest of this kind of takes care of itself. Exactly. But if you don't, if you if you ignore that, then you know you could be facing some some issues, some 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 problems. Right. And so this is something that I think is 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 nice in the sense that it's always been there, but we haven't necessarily acted upon it. And so I think it's two sides of the same coin where we were kind of running with just one side, which is you know profit, 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 and it's like, well, you got to have profits, but on the other side of that coin, it's also purpose. It's like, what's the higher purpose that your business has? What is it that you what is it that you exist for? Right. And you can do both. And the research right. is showing now that if you do both, you actually make more money and, and, and do more uh, things of value in your community. Yeah. So, you know, you can do one or the other, absolutely. But um, you don't have to. you got another option now. Right. Uh, so you can blend with the social impact B Corporation structure. Correct. So, yep. yeah. Now, I want to use an example that uh, was uh, written and produced and directed by Jerry Evans. And that is... <laughs> <laughs> When you're talking about that, you're talking about promotion of the business. You're talking about promotion of goodwill. You know, uh, your employees feeling a higher sense of purpose. A lot of times when I looked at that and when I was thinking about business, I was thinking about, you know, when you really want to close or, you know, make a profit, I always used to say, you got to open the wallet to close the wallet. And I know it just seems kind of weird that that's a statement like that would come out. But what it means is you're promoting you know, the whole concept of, you know, giving back the, the, the business aspect of what we're trying to achieve here is one of the things that, that I think is really key in today's society. And in order to do that, 
you know, you've got to promote yourself. You've got to give goodwill. You've got to make your employees feel comfortable about what they're doing. And in essence, you're opening up the wallet, and then you're able to close it because you're making more money. All right. So and I, I don't know if that example is, you know, made kind of clear, but, you know, it's just something that I had come up with a long time ago, and I thought I'd use it in today's program. <laughs> <laughs> but but I think what you're bringing up, too, is a really good point about, you know, thinking different about how you're going and, and, and defining success and being successful, right? right yeah. A lot of businesses will go out there and say, we've got the best product on the market. It's made with this material. It's made with this stuff. It's phenomenal. You should go pick one up, you know, because, you know, we're the best, and here are all these people going to tell us that we are. But then there's a different way to do that where, you know, and, and I can use Tom's shoes as an example in this case is where, you know, they're not necessarily in the business to sell shoes. That just happened to be the business model that they went with. They're in the business of saving people's lives because they're trying to, to get people to buy those shoes so they can give some of those away. And they're pivoting. They're changing. They're evolving their model. Right. But that's the difference, I think, is that, you know, come by from this place. It's got the best quality products and the best kind of shoes, and they look f- f- stylish and fantastic, right? And, that, and that's fine. People will go buy those types of shoes. But these guys are saying, hey, buy these shoes from us because if you care about other people and if you care about saving lives, shoes are something that you wear every single day. Ours are made with good products and recycled materials or whatever it is that's important to you. But, you know, you're, you're buying it because you're trying to kind of give back and help these folks. And we're not asking you to spend more money. We're asking you to spend money that you're, reg- you're normally going to spend anyway because we all got to wear shoes. Buy a pair from us, and we'll give a pair away. And that's where I think a lot of people are more interested in that whole dynamic where, in some cases, you know, some people will, will tell you it, it costs more money to go buy from these folks. And the research says that 70% of people will spend more money on a product or service if it's right. going to help to kind of create more more value. Some people won't. It's all about price, and that's okay. But the majority of people say that if they believe in a cause, they'll spend more money. Now, that's that's very different than just giving money to a cause. And that's what's very different about this. Because normally that's what you do. You give money. I don't have $5,000 to give to a cause. I care about it. I'd right. love to give $5,000, but I don't. Yeah. But can I go and spend five dollars on a cup of coffee, or ten dollars on a sandwich, or you know, hundred dollars on a jacket? That's going to go to a cause that I believe in. That they're going to help to fix that issue. It's something I'm buying anyway. It's in my budget already. Right. That's that pivotal piece where, from a marketing perspective, it's easier to sell that rather than give me five thousand dollars. I'll just buy money from you, company that's doing good work on this stuff already. And for a lot of people who are not really familiar with the concept, what Jonathan's talking about is that in the old days, you would buy a pair of shoes from Sears, and then you'd make a donation to Goodwill out of your charity money. Well, what they're doing now is blending that. So when you buy a pair of shoes from, from uh, Tom's Shoes, they're making the donation on your behalf. So you're not spending twice the money. So if people didn't get the concept, that's how easy this is now, how much of a no-brainer it is. Right. Absolutely. And then as far as uh, going back to an earlier segment, you talked about the fact that they have these world conferences about social impact, and they're saying, where's the United States? And Jonathan's a humble guy. But you got to call the truth the truth, right? To a certain degree, there's a lot of truth behind the fact because Jonathan wasn't there yet. And I'm saying that very honestly because, you know, so many people say that, you know, somebody else is going to do it. Somebody else is going to do it. Somebody's got to step up and take charge. And because you did, now it's getting out there. So if you want to partner with Jonathan, if you're a business owner, you're a millennial, <clears throat> you're going to college, whatever. We're going to have Jonathan give out his phone number, his website, maybe his email address, depending on whatever, and get a hold of Jonathan because this doesn't happen without people taking action. You can hear this show. You can feel good about the show, just like we talked about seminars. But if you don't take the action, it goes nowhere. So how do they reach you to find out more information and to partner with you on this? Yeah, so definitely check out the website. And, um, again, the organization <coughs> excuse me, uh, is the Colorado Institute for Social Impact. <coughs> and the website is www. Uh, and it's CI and then the number 4, S. So the four stands for four sector. So mm, it's ci4si.org. Nice. Uh, and then it's just info at ci4si.org as well. So those, that, that's the be- check it out. There's a bunch of good information on there. We've got classes coming up. But I would also tell people to go on Facebook and just, just search the you know, Colorado Institute for Social Impact or CI4SI, either one, and like that page. Because on the Facebook page is where we're always pushing the events and the mm. classes and the education. There's a lot of free stuff on there, and that's what we're trying to kind of get out. That's We're a social enterprise ourselves, our business model, where we're, so, we're an educational one. So we're trying to give information out there for free, educate people on the stuff, uh, so people can help to incorporate this into their business or even into their nonprofits. And so more people that do this, you know, one, it'll be better for the economy, but it's also better for our community. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, that that's the best way is, you know, go on Facebook and check that out, get signed up for stuff, or go to the website or just email us at, us at that, that info at 
cifrsi.org. Are there any social events that you also want to talk oh, yeah. about? Uh, you know, because uh, well, there's a big we, one coming up. All right, here we go. There's a big one. So, um, our largest event of the year happens in March. That sounds like a long way away, yeah. but it, as you all, as you guys know, it's like we're in October, so that means right. this, Christmas is here and New Year's celebration. I mean, it's just it's going to happen. Thanksgiving, right? of which I was born. The, <laughs> right, right, right. Thanksgiving here it is March, <laughs> but uh, in in January is when we're going to start taking nominations for mm. this, this 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 event. So this will be nice. our third year of the Prism Awards, and the Prism Awards are the only event in Colorado where we're honoring social entrepreneurs. Um, and so we've we've had two phenomenal years already. Um, the number of people that are showing up to this is is incredible. Hmm. We had up close to about three hundred people at our last one, and the first one we had, I think, one hundred and fifty. So it's it's growing very quickly. Um, but we're going to have we're going to expand this. So we're probably going to be in not just Southern Colorado. We'll probably be taking nominations from like Fort Collins, hmm. and Denver, and Grand Junction, and other places. So we could wanna, I nominate Chuck Bader? Or? You, can, you can nominate <laughs> Chuck Bader. <laughs> you always be on social that. entrepreneur of the year. Inspiring. <laughs> yeah. but, but that's great that you're really getting reach all over the state, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and and again, we're trying to do a couple of things. One, award you know social entrepreneurs for this for the great work, mm-hmm. recognize them. But two, it's an educational way, so exactly. people can say, well. Well, if that person can do it, I can do it. Or, well, I right. didn't know what this was really. And then I saw what their business model was. And it's like, okay, now I get it. It, it clicks for me. Right. So, you know, this will be probably bigger and better uh, because we'll have, you know, multiple, you know, hopefully multiple cities. And uh, we're going to do it here in Colorado Springs. We're not going to go necessarily to anywhere else. We're, Interesting. We're, we started it here. We'll keep it here. We'll invite people to come down here for this. But this is going to be a great way to honor social entrepreneurs. Um, and then also later this week, um, if you're really interested in catching something sooner than that, uh, we've got our fourth sector series, and this is something we do every quarter. We get a panel, um, and that panel covers um, this. This week, we're going to do one on social business. So, what is that? And I'll get you the exact time here, to make sure I have it. But that's going to be this Thursday. Um, it's going to be downtown at Michelle's Makery, that maker space that's right there, um, and that old Michelle's that's right next to kind of Bingo Burger and everything else. Is that right? I didn't know that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, but that's going to be um, at um, at. Four, or I'm sorry, five o'clock. So get there around four thirty if you want to come do some networking. So from five o'clock to six thirty, we're going to have a phenomenal um, panel. This is our third panel that we've done this year. We do um, three to four every single year, hmm. in addition to classes. So this is a great time to come and hear from from ex- experts, you know, and, and kind of chat with them, ask them questions, etc. So we have got a panel of about five different folks. Um, it'll be at that Michelle's Makery. It's actually the the company that owns is called Rim Technologies. Okay. Um, they're, they're a great organization. But if you want to catch something sooner, come this Thursday. Um, that's, that's a free event. Okay. Uh, but if you really want to catch the big one, that's in March. More details to to come. Um, but we hope we're hoping to get between three hundred and fifty and four hundred uh, social entrepreneurs or people that support the movement hmm. uh, to come to this event and come out and have a good time. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, we're yeah. going to have to wrap up here, but. Once again, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, you know, the website, info. phone number, and all that. Yeah, so info at ci, the number four, si.org. Um, and go to our website at www.ci4si, the number four, dot org as well. But also check out that Facebook page. And there's multiple ways to get a hold of us on, on all that. There's stuff on the – there's information on the website. There's information uh, on Facebook, et cetera. But, um, yeah, come, come show up to an event. Come to a class. Get involved. Exactly. Come learn yes. more about this. This is something for everybody. This yeah. is not just for a select few. This is for everybody. Exactly. And this is the way things should be. You know, it's like thinking that you guys are working on that. So, yep, exactly. But that is fine. We just wanted to pause you, have you back on here again, have the updates. And it's yeah. interesting as far as market research. Whenever I talk to entrepreneurs and talk about this a year ago, I would say, have you heard of B Corporation, Social Impact? No, what's that? And now I'm seeing more and more that mm-hmm. understand that. So it's working. Yep. yep. <laughs> people, are, people are hearing about it. Yes. And Jonathan keeps working too. <laughs> yes. And to make sure you keep working because we're taking down our last 30 seconds here. Go on to YouTube, go on to Facebook, find this stuff out, get motivated, believe in yourself, set a plan, and start working on the plan because you can make great things happen in the world. We all have the same brains with the same capabilities to do amazing things in the world. All we got to do is put forth the effort. So make sure that you wake up every day and do something or anything to keep moving forward. You've been listening to Profiles of Success on Success Radio USA with Chuck Bader and Jerry Evans, brought to you in part by the 365 Grand Club, Colorado Springs' only elite urban downtown club. So start enjoying the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today at 365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. God bless you all, and see you next week on Profiles of Success. Profiles of Success.